Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and this is the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to 3D Printers Part 2. So hopping right into the video, I made the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to 3D Printers a long time ago and it has become super, super popular. And I've gotten a ton of feedback in the comments section of that video with questions and feedback. So I'd like to answer some of the questions I got in that video in Part 2 and also go more in depth into 3D printing. If you're a beginner or intermediate, you can learn more about 3D printing and hopefully gain some more knowledge about 3D printing. But before that, this is going to expand off the stuff I talked about in part one. So if you haven't already, click the link below or the eye up above to go watch part one of this video now. So I'm gonna go through the 3D printing process to the end with the 3D printed part in your hands. So the first thing of course is to find your 3D model. And most of the time you can find models online under your Thingiverse or GrabCAD or my mini factory. And what I do to find a part that I want to print for fun or, or an upgrade for my printer or just a fun vase or toy or little object is I go to the explore page and popular of Thingiverse. So you can just Google Thingiverse popular and it'll have the most popular models that people have downloaded on Thingiverse. And it's really cool because most of the things there are something that I want to print because everybody else has printed this model. Also, GrabCAD has a lot of product models and industrial machines like models of cars or, or a Raspberry Pi or machines or big mechanical things. So while Thingiverse and my mini factory are more little fun prints or upgrades for your 3D printer, GrabCAD has a big industrial models that most of the time they do provide STLs which you can 3D print with. So once you find your file, there are two types of files that the slicers will use. And of course, the, the most popular one is an STL, but there's also an OBJ. So when you're installing your slicer software, it might ask you if you want to install the STL plugin or the OBJ plugin or both. And this will allow your slicer to read STL files or OBJ files. Most 3D printable CAD files are in the STL format. So that's what you should probably use most often. We can also use OBJ files to slice and 3D print. So if you want to print a more custom model, you might want to CAD your own model. Then you can do this from software like SketchUp, which has an online version as well, and Tinkercad. And these are more for beginners. If you're just starting off, you can find tutorials online. They're really simple and easy to make simple parts that you can 3D print with. But most people who want to make more complex models, a lot of people like Fusion 360 from Autodesk and you can get it for free with a student license. And this is a more advanced software, but it's still super simple and easy to use. And again, there are lots and lots of tutorials online on how to CAD things in Fusion 360. And Fusion 360 is a more of an intermediate CAD software. So making sketches and extruding from there, making fillets and holes, all those techniques are used in more advanced and expert CAD software, such as Autodesk Inventor Pro, which is what I use. And it basically uses all, all those techniques as Fusion 360 and brings them up to a much more advanced software. But it's also a super easy switch because these are both made by Autodesk and they have a lot of the same icons and features and menus. And it's a really easy switch. So to CAD your model, so you're gonna wanna use calipers to measure in the physical world the dimensions you wanna to use to make your part in, in CAD. So calipers are small measuring device, which you can measure in millimeters or inches or centimeters, but, but usually we measure in millimeters because that's what the 3D printing community uses. So you can measure, say you wanna make a knob for an oven, you can measure with your calipers the diameter of the little axle that's coming out of the, out of the oven, and you can enter that measurement into your CAD software, so when you print it out, it'll precisely fit onto the end of that shaft, and the knob will fit perfectly. So that's how you get measurements from the real world and bring them into your CAD software. M most intermediate CAD softwares are going to have the, have the process of making a, a 2D sketch, and then extruding that sketch into a three-dimensional model, and then you can add features such as holes, fillets, things like that to make your part more fit your requirements. So once your part is finished, you want to export it as an STL, like I said before, that's the file type that your slicer is going to use. And once we have a model, you're going to want to download a 3D slicer. So a slicer is what actually creates 
the layers that the 3D printer is gonna actually use to 3D print the model. So there are many slicers on the market, but the most popular and easiest ones to use are Cura, of course, Simplify 3D, and Slicer with a three, and also Preform for Formlabs printers, also known as SLA printers. So Cura is more simple, and Simplify 3D has more advanced features and you can do more advanced things, but Cura is great for beginners because it's super simple and easy to use, and it's also free. So once you import your model into the slicer, it creates the slices for each layer that the 3D printer prints out onto the bed, creating layer by layer the 3D model. So once you're slicing your model, you wanna make sure that the printer profile is correct, that they're slicing for your exact printer. You wanna make sure it has the exact bed size as your printer, the number of extruders, your filament diameter, etc. things like that. And you can also adjust the orientation of the model for best printing. So for FDM printers, it's best to avoid overhangs and you wanna put a large flat surface down on the bed to get the part to stick down onto the bed. And also if you're printing a part that's gonna go under a heavy load or something that's gonna hold up some heavy object, a normal FDM printer prints layer lines horizontally. So you wanna think about that when orienting your model so the stress isn't pulling down on lines printed vertically, but the part is gonna be stronger if the, if the weight is being pulled down on, on a part where the layers are printed horizontally. So you wanna make sure you orient your model correctly so the force is being pulled down on horizontal layers instead of vertical layers because it might snap easier if they're printed with vertical layers. Also for SLA printers or resin printers, it is best to turn models on the side at a very steep angle and use support. And you do this because the layers cure better and also there would be a lot of suction on the print if there's a large flat surface on the bed of the resin printer and you don't want there to be suction in between the bed and the part. So once you have your model oriented correctly, you can adjust the part settings in your slicer. So the important settings to change for FDM printers are layer height, which is the height of each individual layer, the wall thickness, which is how thick the actual shell is around the object, the top and bottom layers, which is how many layers that the printer will print to the top layer and the bottom layer, the infill, which is the percentage of plastic that it'll print inside your model. If it was 50% infill, then it will be 50% plastic, 50% air in the model. Also, your nozzle and bed temp should be provided with your filament. Also your print speed, which is how fast it prints the model. If you want support, if there's a lot of overhangs on FDM printers, and if you want to use a raft skirt or brim, a raft is a large flat piece that prints underneath the object so it's easier to take off the bed. And also if the print only touches the bed in a few spots, you want to use a raft so it'll stick and adhere more to the printer bed. A skirt is a few lines around the object before it starts printing to prime the nozzle. And a brim are a few layers printed on the bed around the object to make sure that it sticks well to the bed as well. And all this depends on what type of filament you're using, the part you're printing, and the printer you're printing on. Also, if the printer has dual colors, you have to import two models into your software and then press a button that joins those two models together and then you can click on each one of those models which will be printed in a different color or material and individually edit that model's settings. Also, when you think you're done slicing the part, you wanna make sure to check the layer view to see if the slicing is correct and you can go layer by layer and see exactly where the printer is gonna to move to print your part. Also with FDM printers, you want the least number of supports as possible because it leaves behind some flecks of plastic that will show on the surface and also it'll bump the print time up. But for SLA printers, most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to have support because again, you want the part to be stronger and you want, you want the layers to print better and you don't want that part to be flat on the bed and create suction between the part and the bed of the SLA printer, which will not result in a very good print. So once you're done changing all the settings and orientation of your model, you wanna slice it and put the G code on the SD card. And the G code is basically a file of ASCII characters that tells the printer exactly where to move and on what axes. It tells the printer to heat the nozzle up to this temperature. It tells the printer to move the X axis this many steps 
the Y axis and, and this many steps. And it's basically just the instructions exactly where to move the head and how to print the object th that we just sliced. So you can insert the SD card with the G code directly into the printer or use it over USB or Wi-Fi. So now it's time to insert the filament into the 3D printer. Dual extruder printers are gonna have dual materials with either two colors, two types of filaments. So many types of filaments are of course plastic because it was then melt when heated up to a high temperature. The most common filament is PLA because it's easy to print with and you don't need a heated bed and it's also very cheap. Another popular material is ABS, which is stronger plastic but a lot harder to print with and you do need a heated bed because it has a tendency to warp off the bed while printing. Also, a lot of exotics are PLA composites, which means it's a material mixed in with PLA, such as wood, which is wood dust infused in PLA, sparkle filament, which of course has sparkles infused with PLA, also glow in the dark, UV light changing, temperature changing, and also carbon fiber. Other types of plastics, like metal infused, are really abrasive, so you might want to have a ruby nozzle or hardened steel nozzle when printing those materials because they have a tendency to slowly rub away the brass on a regular nozzle. Also, hips, PETG, nylon, TPU, and PVA are also other types of plastics that we can use in 3D printing. And these plastics come on spools, usually around one kilogram, and they come in either 1.75 or three millimeter diameters. But it's funny because three millimeter filament is actually 2.85 millimeters. So most filaments come with a desiccant packet to keep the moisture out of the air and stop the filament from becoming brittle and breaking while printing. So when you're storing your filament, you should probably put it in a resealable plastic bag with some desiccants inside of it to keep it dry. Also, some filaments are not really affected by the moisture in the air that much. Like PLA is fine to keep out in the air, but materials like PVA and also TPU absorb moisture from the air and get put on crack or they don't print as well as they would if the moisture was kept from getting to it. So we can feed the filament into the printer for use and some printers print materials better than others. For instance, direct drive extruders, which pushes the filament down into the nozzle right above it with only a few inch gap in between, prints better with, with flexibles than Bowden feed systems. And Bowden systems have the actual motor that pushes a filament on the frame of the printer and uses a long tube to feed the filament into the hot end. So there's a good foot, or foot and a half, where the printer is pushing the filament up into where the, the filament is actually being heated up and being printed out. Also, hardened steel nozzles and ruby nozzles don't wear as fast as brass or nozzle. So if you're using an abrasive filament, such as carbon fiber, you might want to think about getting a hardened nozzle. Also, heated bed printers can print much more materials than non-heated beds. Usually PLA is one of the only materials that non-heated bed printers can print with. Also, printers with enclosures can print better with materials such as hips and ABS than open frame printers. Also, of course, dual extruder printers can print with two materials. Some come with one nozzle and feed in the material in one side and then pull it out to feed in the other material and they both go into one nozzle or others come with two nozzles with two filaments going into either of the nozzles. Also, FDM printers, they push filament through a hot nozzle come in basically two forms, a Cartesian printer and a Delta printer. Cartesian printers are the basic printers that you normally see. They print along the X, Y, and Z axis and there's a motor for each axis the head moves along the z-axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis. Also, there are delta printers, which still uses the XYZ plane, but has a circular bed and has three arms and three motors that move independently to move the nozzle around in 3D space. The basic parts of an FDM printer are the bed, the hot end, the extruder, the stepper motors, the cooling fans, the control board, the screen, and the power supply. And all these things are on every FDM 3D printer and allow it to 3D print models. And a benefit of using an FDM printer is that once the part finishes, you can pop it off the bed right away and use it right away. But that is not the case with SLA or resin printers. So for SLA printers, they use a laser to cure resin in a bath and they print upside down and pull the part out of the resin as it cures layer by layer with a laser 
so there is only one laser that is moved by a series of motors and mirrors to shine the laser in different points along the resin bath that cures each layer. And this allows for extremely precise prints and printing with super small objects. But the downside, of course, is that they have to be washed and cured after they're printed in an alcohol bath and cured in UV light. So once they're printed, you can't take off the part and use it right away. You have to let it sit for a little bit to be cleaned off and cured. Also, DLP printers are another resin printer, but they use a projector for the source of light instead of a laser. So you can start the print on the printer, and we always wanna watch the first layer, which is the most important time to actually sit and watch your 3D printer. And wanna make sure that on FDM printers, the part actually sticks to the bed and the first few layers look correct. So we use glue sticks or sometimes hairspray on the bed in order to get the plastic to stick onto the build surface. Some printers use glass, some use painter's tape, some use a plastic surface like build tack, which helps parts stick correctly. And some people even use glue, such as Magigoo, to get their first layer of the part to stick down correctly. And you want the first layer to not be too high, where it peels off the printer, or not too low, where it swishes into the bed. You always want the first layer to be a perfect line on the bed and stick to the bed very securely. You don't want to just watch the first layer, but the first few layers, make sure that everything is going well and the print is progressing nicely. And then you can allow the print to finish and take it off the bed. And then if you have an SLA printer, you also want to watch the first few minutes of the print to make sure that everything looks like it's going correctly. So you want to make sure you clean up the filament or resin after because you don't want to let your some filaments and some resins sit out because it will not be able to use again if it's sitting out, if the resin gets hard, or if the filament absorbs moisture and gets brittle. So you want to either put the resin back into its container or put filament into a plastic bag with desiccant packets. So I hope you got some more insight into 3D printing and learned some more in-depth info on 3D printing apart to having an actual 3D model in your hand. So that concludes my video on 3D printing for beginners part two. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please comment down below. I'll make sure to answer every single one of them. And if you want to know my recommendations for 3D printers, I'll put a link down below to GearBest, which has a bunch of awesome 3D printers. Also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name is at 3D.now. I'll post updates on projects, some prints that I'm doing, filament, and much, much more. So that being said, please like this video, comment if you have any questions, subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.